Hello, this is Steve Powers. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about um, vine charcoal. I'm not going to really go into uh, a lot of details, I just want to give a few examples. Now, vine charcoal is a very soft charcoal, it's very similar to willow, uh, it comes in packages. Um, I tend to keep mine in the plastic wrap, and um, since I can't really tell the difference between vine and uh, willow, I will usually um, I'll put a little sticker on and tell you tell me what they are um, but I like to keep them uh, clean as well but um, you can see here uh, it goes on pretty uh, dark and this is a very light touch and I, I can blend with my finger but um, I like using these weeble pads and um, right now I, I'm not you know I'm just uh, I can uh, do some lines here you can see how you can get some lines you can actually do a, a sketch with them without even blending if you don't want to but what I like to do is to, to lay the value down and then to blend it in. Um, there's a couple sides to this. The one thing I get to do is, um, you know, uh, well, I, by the way, this th these are like th three bucks. Um, I get, think I'm at uh, Hobby Lobby. Very inexpensive. You don't have to buy any expensive uh, willow or uh, vine charcoal. Um, but uh, the added benefit of uh, uh, drawing with value is right now I, I don't know what I'm drawing here. Um, you can see how um, the, the value blends quite well. I can also erase it out. So I can use the eraser to uh, sculpt the value. So just adding some value in here. And I'm not sure what I'm going to get out of this. I'll just add it in and blend it again let's see what I come up with um, maybe I'll erase out some stuff here see what I get I don't like that too much I didn't like the shape of it and I'm not able to really pull out all the value here um, there is you know it, it, it's it's when you start blending it into the paper you're you're filling up the teeth of the paper and um, you can't get it all out, but this is this is a value um, sketch. This is this is not detailed. This is not meant for prime time. This is just coming up with uh, a, an idea. Um, I can work out some compositions like this, uh, where uh, you're just again drawing with value. Quite often, if I'm working on faces or been looking at a lot of um, uh, vehicles or characters or you know animals that's what I'll tend to start doing so um, in a combination with the uh, vine charcoal I like using um, a pencil I'm using I think a general um, 2b 2 2h no, excuse me a, a, a 2b um, which is I can get pretty dark with it but I can also you can see get light but what I can do with it is I can put in the darker details once I figure out what I'm looking for. And um, here I am just experimenting. I do this a lot. And this is uh, just a 9x12 uh, pad of paper. And um, I will actually even do smaller um, charcoal sketches or pencil sketches. And if I find a design that I like, then I'll go back and add the darks and uh, the values because Keep in mind, um, when you think of it this way, with value change is form change. So things are look round, they can look flat, um, they can look sharp, they can look soft. And it all depends on that value. Your eye is going to uh, see that the value change as form change. And here this is um, looking to me like an animal looking away from me, an ear and course if that's one ear then I'm gonna have to add an, another ear in the background but um, that just all came out of what I saw um, that value lets me or lets my imagination uh, flow so something that I necessarily wouldn't have say hey I'm gonna go down here I'm gonna draw this character I'm gonna draw this this creature what kind of creature? I don't know. So if I put that value down, then I start seeing the shapes. I start seeing the, the form changes. 
and then I can add in the detail after the fact. And quite often what I do, it, 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 three steps for me, it helps. I come up with the idea, just like this, I'm doing an idea sketch. And then I will do a design sketch where I'll add more detail. Um, granted, um, amongst these, those two steps, you also work out maybe compositional ideas. You get a, a sense of the character or the purpose of the sketch. So once you have that, the, the, the final could be, um, again, traditional. It can be color, could still be uh, value, it, or it could be digital. You scan it in and then you uh, go with it. So with, in this case, you know, um, there's a couple other ways that you can blend here too. Um, I have, um, you can use your finger if you want, and again, it doesn't matter if you're putting oil into this paper because this is a beginning sketch. This is not final artwork. Um, I do like uh, working out the details. I, I won't say details because I'm not really doing a full render here at all. But if I do want darks to be dark or I want to blend a smaller area that my finger can't fit into or the weevil pad can't fit into, using a um, blending uh, stick is uh, the next best thing. And when you're doing values and doing charcoal, uh, keep in mind that that stick will pick up the value. You can almost draw with it once it uh, gets saturated. But running it over a, a clean piece of paper or an eraser will take off some of that value too. So just be wary of that. So right now I'm just adding a little bit more dark and see I want to blend in that little area. Well, that's what I'm doing. I am using the uh, stump to do just that. And I do like the solid stumps better than the... Um, some of the uh, corrugated stuff um, and those are great uh, terms there I think it's tortillas tortillas I can't even pronounce that you know, that's how much uh, thought I put into those but I do like the stumps and um, you can make them yourself if you want And but that and the weevil pads and that the weevil pad um, is a, uh, a mesh a cotton mesh so you can rip them apart and uh, take what you need and you get a whole box that'll last a long time but and you can see here I'm just uh, adding more um, with the value in uh, some of it will come off you can't really see it too much on the camera as you can um, in real life you'll see that but it, you can remove most of it it's one thing with the charcoal um, it blends very well so I can I mean essentially if you think of the difference between a, a graphite pencil and charcoal is graphite is gray and charcoal is black so I can get a full value range almost full I should say because it won't go completely black but it'll be very very close to it and in conjunction with the white of the paper um, you can get a very large value quick value range because of uh, all the gray tones um, possibilities with just the one charcoal stick. Granted, yes, um, you can get the, the lighter and the darker, but you know, the light stuff, if you're bearing down on it, will go pretty dark. And with this very soft um, vine charcoal, I can go really, really dark. Um, the one thing I, uh, you know, here I am looking at this character. I'm not sure what I want to do. Um, is it going to have a tail? What kind of a tail? Um, to me, kind of looks like a a, a uh, cat a hunting cat not sure um, I'm not sure what it's doing but it does it looks like it's crouched down and you have to think once you start getting that idea of it what is this character what's it doing in the uh, picture um, if it's hunting you know what kind of environment it is because to demonstrate or to show off a uh, character even in, in a simple um, idea sketch like this you want a little, a I call it a pseudo environment, where you get the gist of what it's doing. It a the little bit of environment adds to the story of the character. So, um, but you you know, no matter what you use, if you're using, um, you know, marker, or if you're using um, ink, if uh, you're you're using pencil, charcoal, or a combination of all of them. Uh, in a design sketch or an idea sketch, 
you can and you, you can get as long as you get your idea out there quickly uh, basically that's what we're looking to do is get my idea out there quickly now this is a little bit longer than I would normally do but um, in doing this as a tutorial of course this is a voiceover uh, from what I was doing uh, the original was done in a very noisy environment and though I think um, the audio what I said was important uh, I was not going to I, I wouldn't have listened through uh, more than I don't know three minutes of uh, a noisy audio like that so so I'm saving from the pain of a uh, bad audio file I I was just uh, not thinking I just did not put in my uh, on my uh, headphones into a separate microphone I was just using the uh, built-in mic on the camera and, and unfortunately just picked up everything around me but one thing I do like more about using the charcoal in the graphite over marker um, and pen even though it does stand out quite well and I do like the textures you get from it I like to sculpt with the eraser. you've seen me pull out the eraser more than enough time I just put in some lines here and there just to give some feel to it but then I can you know use that eraser to you know basically change the bigger shapes and with this um, you know I, I really did not know what I was going to uh, work towards uh, I just put down that value and I just started sculpting putting some down taking some away blending it in if it gets too dark blend it in with your fingers blend it in with a stump uh, if you like an area you wanted to uh, you know stick out a little bit more then make it a little darker because your eye is going to go right where that that value is and the darkest value is going to jump is going to be f more forward to you it's going to be the area that is um, basically the focal point and that's where a lot of times your the first place your eye is going to go it's going to go to the darker areas because that's usually up closer something is a distance it's going to be lighter and less detailed so use those to your advantage when you're, you're trying to figure out what you're looking for you want to push something back pull it a little bit forward change the value change the shape um, at the beginning um, I don't know where the light was uh, coming from I didn't even know what I was drawing but in this case where I left a little bit of um, uh, less value on the, the hind quarters it looks like the light is coming from the upper right hand um, right hand uh, corner and which makes sense um, you know, think of this as a hunting cat think of um, it's looking at the prey so it's got the light the sun is in its prey's eyes which is going to blind it temporarily or or uh, reduce its vision at, at the very least and that's an advantage and uh, I mean granted this is not realistic cat this is this is a character this is you know a very loose illustration of such but this is the type of things that go through my mind uh, and that go through a lot of um, illustrators minds is you know why is it doing this and I mean you don't have to get all philosophical and stuff like it's it's an animal it's gonna hunt it likes to eat I like to eat you know um, I don't necessarily have to hunt thankfully probably starve within a week but I do know where to go get groceries but um, in this to me I, I'm just trying to make it playful and uh, uh, help with my imagination what I want to do and then once I figure out what it's doing then I go okay well if it's laying down here um, what's it laying down is it on dirt is it on grass it's probably going to be in a field it's going to be hiding behind some grass so in a little bit here I will add some grass in it's a good thing to have in there um, it adds uh, depth to your composition as well and it breaks up the lines of the character I mean it's kinda right now it's kinda boring all I have here is um, you know this, this little guy sitting here you know uh, facing the ground um, we don't see what it's going after I'm not if I start doing that then I, I will add, end up adding a secondary character and it, for an idea sketch no but in a design sketch yeah a matter of fact what I'll do is a lot of a lot of times I will come up with these characters on their own just like I'm doing here and uh, for no no apparent reason I don't have a purpose for it but I will use it later on and um, I I will I'll uh, repurpose them is what I call it and I'll use them 
for um, a secondary or primary character. Now, um, the one thing with this tail is I'm not sure why it, it's darker than the other. Maybe it is colored differently. I think in the design sketch, um, adding maybe some stripes to it, um, like a tiger, but light stripes. Uh, we actually have a, a cat in our house. Um, still not sure what breed he is, but he actually has tiger stripes in his tail, more prominent than in um, uh, the, his body, but they are there. So uh, taking that from reality, um, taking it from something I know, it's a lot easier to come up with. Um, you can add those details, and um, probably, and I won't do it here, but I, w I will do it at a later date, and make it a little bit larger so you can see those details. Right now, I mean, this thing is, oh, you know, smaller than the size of my hand. You can see that. Um, and here I am. I'm adding value into um, the ground uh, around it. I'm kind of sneaking that value up to the character. Um, I guess if I was uh, less timid, I would just you know smear it right up there and use uh, the uh, eraser to take some more of it out. But I also don't want the darks to compete with um, darks, or rather the darks be against uh, a lighter color. And you know, the light color is against darks. This way, um, you you develop that contrast, you know, lights against lights, uh, lights against darks, darks against lights. It does work. But here again, you can see I'm putting in a, a pseudo environment, and I'm also um, covering up um, what I couldn't take out with the eraser earlier when I was uh, doing my uh, demonstrations uh, of what I can do with um, the vine charcoal. But um, again, with that weevil pad, and um, just sneaking in there, and it blends really nice. But um, I'm going to have to add some, some grass in here or um, a bit more of an environment. This is, um, uh, we have a few more minutes here, but this is the time to start adding it. I think I've gotten enough design work on the character itself. And you can see where the pencil helps. I can sneak in there and uh, blend. And that's too, too is... Um, if you are blending with a uh, stump and with a weevil pad, um, circular motions uh, instead of cross hatching work quite well um, with uh, pencils. I don't care if it's charcoal or graphite or even pastels. Pastels is a, another medium very similar to charcoal. Um, something I've started working with in the last uh, few months trying to incorporate color more than value. If what I have been told and what I have uh, come to learn is um, most of your work, the values have to be there before the color. I mean, if the values are right, the colors can actually be wrong. Grant, a lot of color is um, subjectionable. You know, it is left up to the individual. Some people tend to go for uh, certain colors. Myself, I like the reds and the oranges, the more warm or even hot tones, though there are people, I mean, I, the greens and the blues were the cooler tones, and um, these are things you have to look for. And here you can see here I'm uh, adding in uh, just some very light um, grass, kind of pushing the character a little forward because the grass is lighter, but it's given giving you an idea of what kind of environment this this little guy is uh, in you know granted I don't have anything in here for scale um, but the grass um, will help in that case too now what I did here uh, you can see I'm going over um, in front of the character with a pencil well what I should have done and I will do when I take this to a, a design level if I take it to a design level I should have put that uh, grass made it lighter over the darker body so you can see where the grass cuts over it. Um, it is tricky but it it does work quite well and also what I'm doing here is the tips of this grass sometimes you'll see it um, and of course you don't have a lot of detail but it goes to seed when it gets really tall so um, this just adds a little bit more of um, that faux realism you know, take it from the real world and um, try to, you know, basically fake it. That's what art is. It is um, 
Uh, I got to watch out my tangent lines too. I don't want one grass going to the other, and it's a little contrived there with three pieces coming out of the same place. So, not sure if I can fix that with um, maybe with a few other things. But, um, anyways, real uh, it, uh, art is not a reality. It is um, the impression of realism. You know, we're trying to. Um, give that impression of what we you know fantasy and in this case is fantasy but all art is even um, even a picture um, the composition I mean I think photography is harder because you have to be more patient they have to go out and you have to have the right light the right subject have to be there for the right moment especially if it's um, say I want to uh, film a cat, take a good picture of a cat um, hunting. Well, that's going to take a long time uh, to uh, come up with or to capture. But for me, um, you know, if I want to do this, I get my pose down and I'm not looking at any kind of um, any kind of uh, reference to copy. What I'm doing is coming up, let my imagination fill in what it can do and when I take it to the design level or to a final um, then I will and even in the design level I in case I'm just trying to get the anatomy just right maybe the hind legs I'm not sure um, you know what I'm gonna see like right here I said I know there's there's these shapes behind uh, or in front of the ears and the eyes protrude I mean it, it is a uh, the cat is does have the eyes uh, facing forward because it's a predator it's not prey so you're gonna have these bulges uh, basically cheekbones and you're gonna have those indents of uh, cheekbones um, and uh, the indents um, like a temple in front of the ears granted I put a little too much value but put it in take it out add it take it out blend it in um, and you'll get that shape and that's the way I like to work some guys can go in there with you know, a little bit of uh, marker sketching, and then it'll come in with uh, the pen, and then it'll add the values in with some more marker, and they can do it rather quickly. And it is great for design, uh, but I kind of like to attack it um, as a sculptor. I like to use um, that eraser a lot. So medium for me is a pencil. It's something, something I'm comfortable with. I've been using it my whole life, but... Um, in you know color you know with, with the pastels and stuff is is just a, a good choice for me um, now with this I am adding a little bit of uh, texture to um, the cat's back so I'm not adding it the, the fur all over the body but I do want to uh, work on the contours you know same with um, you know getting uh, some of this grass to uh, read better you know, I didn't like the way that was coming up there into the other grass. You know, you you, you want it to look um, like it's uh, you know natural, but it, you know there there is a design to nature, um, but it's a design to chaos and a lot of the way um, grasses grow and leaves grow. But there are characteristics that um, it, you know are easy uh, discernible. It, we know that grass doesn't all go up in one place, so they're not all the same height. So you kind of throw it here and there. Um, same with um, doing the, you know, um, going back to the fur on uh, an animal. It doesn't all lay in one place. So, so that about wraps this up. I mean, I'm going to noodle here probably a little bit more, um, and that's that's kind of a problem sometimes. But that's also the benefit too. So. You know, again, you know, you start blending a little bit more here and a little bit more there. And you have to know when to stop because uh, take it to the next step. This is good for what it is. It gives me an idea. Um, I'm not sure where I'd use this character or if it's just a standalone character that I use for display on the blog. You know, the fact is I'm drawing and that's what you have to do every day. So you guys have a good day. I'll talk to you next time. Thank you.